Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an idea I had for projecting points onto arbitrary faces. This way you can have nice aligned patterns of points without having to have a highly detailed mesh. So let's jump right into it. The basic idea is simple. We want to create a projector mesh that will project its points onto our target mesh so that later we can instance things on it like scales or leaves or flower petals or whatever. So first let's create our object that we want to project onto. In this case, we'll just start with a UV sphere. The next thing we'll want is our object to add our geometry node tree to. It really doesn't matter what kind of mesh you add, so I'm just going to add a cube. To this cube, I'll add a new node tree and then I'll get rid of the connection. The first thing we'll need is some kind of geometry to be our point projector. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose a cylinder. So I'll add a mesh primitive cylinder and connect it to my output. I don't want the top and bottom of this cylinder to have any influence over the direction of my points, so I'm going to get rid of the fill type. And I'll add some side segments. Next, we want to project these points onto the surface of the sphere. So we'll drag the sphere into our node tree, add a geometry set position node, because we're going to set the position of our cylinder points, and we want to set these to the surface of our sphere. We can find the surface of our sphere using the raycast node. So if we plug our sphere into the target geometry, we can use the hit position as our new position. Now, of course, we don't see anything yet. So let's go ahead and convert the cylinder to points so that we can see what they're doing. We'll use a mesh to points node and plug it in here. Now you still don't see anything, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first is that our ray direction is pointing to 0, 0, negative 1. So all of the points of our cylinder were shooting their rays straight down. We want the rays to shoot in the direction of the normals. So to do that, we will add an input normal node and plug it into the ray direction. One thing that can really trip people up with the raycast node is that the ray direction here is referencing this forward geometry. So it's referencing the normals of our cylinder, not the normals of our target geometry. However, we still don't see any points. The reason for this is that our cylinder's normals all point outwards, not inwards. So we're going to want to flip the normals of our cylinder. We can do that with a mesh flip faces node. So now we're getting somewhere. If I change the depth of my cylinder, or the vertices, or the side segments, you'll see that it's changing the way it's mapping this to this sphere. So what we'll do is connect some of these things to our input. We'll connect our cylinder settings, and we'll connect our target object. I'll open up the end panel, and since we don't use the incoming geometry, I'll remove that from our inputs. Of course, it would be really nice to be able to visualize the cylinder that's projecting onto this sphere. If I were to join my cylinder to my mesh to points, you would see that I'm getting both the cylinder and the points. But I want the cylinder faces to be out of the way, so I'll add a geometry delete geometry node and set it to only faces. Now as I change the settings, I get a visual representation of my cylinder, but since it's just edges and points, they're not going to render. Now I don't want these coming out the same output of my node, so I'm going to cut this line and get rid of my join geometry and then put my visualization out on separate socket. I'm going to call this one cage. I'll rename this node group to cylinder point project. Now if I were to take another mesh, let's say a Suzanne head, I'll add a mesh to accept my points, another cube, and to the cube I'm going to add a new node tree. I'll go to group and add my cylinder point project. I'll choose the object as the Suzanne, and then I can add a geometry, join geometry node, and connect in my cage. 
Now, as you can see, I'm getting some pretty decent results and I could use these points to do whatever I like. For instance, I could do an instance on points node and add all sorts of rings. Or I could add some kind of scales. However, as you can see, these are all pointing in the same direction, but I could very easily add an input object info node, choose the Suzanne head, and then use a transfer attribute node. The attribute I would want to transfer is the normal of the faces. I would simply need to change the normal into a rotation, and I can do that with an align Euler to vector node. The normal becomes the vector and the rotation goes in here. In this case, I would want to align the Z component of my scale with the faces. Of course, there's no reason why I couldn't do this with the other axes as well. And then I could simply play with the factors until I got some angles I was happy with. Of course, the beauty of this method is that you wouldn't necessarily have to just use cylinders. So if instead of adding a cylinder here, I go ahead and delete it and bring in this from an external geometry, I'm also going to get rid of this flip faces. Now, if I went ahead and added something like a plane here and dragged that into my node group, I could start using it. So if I went ahead and subdivided it, I could use it to create patches of points. And of course, from here, the sky's the limit. Using this technique, I've already created some interesting shapes, and I think it might be useful for other types of surfaces. Give this a try and see what you can come up with. And feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Anyhow, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.